I remember feeling really lost and really hurt and really frustrated. I think that slowly occurred after my mother died um, when I was seven. Um, I think the last time I saw my mother was when she was in hospital. That was the last time. I didn't know that she had died, no one had told me or anything like that. So for me, I think working it out by myself, um, you know, hurt me, you know, and I didn't necessarily feel um, protected or safe with anybody else the way that I'd felt with my mother. Um, I didn't know my dad but I know that he had passed away um, before my mother had um, passed away. Um, so for me, you know, all of a sudden, I'm just basically alone, you know, um, by myself, I'm trying to work out what's actually happening. And so straight after that, I moved to um, Birmingham and I was only there for a short while, but you know and then after that I came back down to London so I was moving from home to home and I guess every home that I was in I didn't necessarily feel you know like I had like I fitted in you know and that was made known you know and you know I think slowly surely but slowly but surely I felt as though you know I felt unloved and I felt like you know there was actually no place to call home but with my mother. And so, you know, as the years went by, I became quite suicidal and, you know, very annoyed, but I, I closed up as well. You know, I wasn't the same little girl that, you know, I was, I was quite closed up. And so, you know, going through and, you know, not feeling like I fitted in in school, you know, I'm coming to a new school here and I'm going to a new school there. I didn't feel like I had a place, you know, and I felt misunderstood and I didn't feel like anybody, you know, understood, you know, the actual loss that I had kind of encountered. So shortly after that, um, you know, leading up into my teenage years and everything at, at age 14, I was kicked out um, by my uncle. Um, and I guess that hurt because, you know, the relationship that we had, you know, I didn't feel like he would have done that. You know, I would have felt like he had stuck it through. And so at 14, I moved. And then even where I moved with another relative, you know, they didn't want me there either. So I'm like, where? Where do I go? Who is there for me? Like, it's just me on my ones, you know? And this is how it's always been, you know, day after day, day after day. And I remember being at, you know, at my aunt's and, you know, being, she lived at the top of the flat. And I remember looking down and just singing no more drama because I, I just didn't want to live anymore. You know, I didn't want to continue you know, life anymore because I felt as though I didn't have a purpose. I felt as though I'd, I had no relevance to anyone. I felt like there was no place for me or no reason for my existence or anything like that. Um, and, you know, I moved back down to London and um, at 16, started college and I was determined not to, you know, allow any of my previous circumstances to kind of dictate where I was going. I didn't want to be a statistic um, in some senses. And, you know, I went to college, did my, my A-levels and four months into that, my uncle's like, you, you got to leave my house. And it's two weeks before Christmas and I've just lost one uncle. And I'm like, you know, what do I do? And I remember having this Ghana must go bag and it was cold and it was late at night. And I was like, where, where am I, where am I going to go? You know? And at that time I had, um, I was, my boyfriend at that time was on the phone and you know, I had this whole hard exterior, like, you know, I don't care. I'm going to do me and blah, blah, blah. But really inside, like, there was a lot of pain and there was a lot of frustration and I didn't really understand. And yeah, you know, you can sometimes, you know, feel as though, you know, you can put yourself voluntarily into some situations, but, you know, I didn't think that love would be so optional, you know, 
based on how someone was and that was me and you know I, I was quite hurt and so I was sofa surfing whilst doing my A-levels and then the following summer my ex-boyfriend's like you know I don't want to be with you anymore and I'm like oh really <laughs> you know I'm just like and that broke me that hurt me because I felt like this whole rejection thing was repeating itself over and over and over and over again and um you know it hurt and I remember you know staying in my hostel depressed I didn't eat for two three weeks or so and I guess it wasn't necessarily the breakup that was the issue um, I think the breakup only revealed everything that was going on for so many years and so I'm there and I'm laying in my bed and I don't know for some reason I thought let me go to church like let me try and I don't know maybe there's an answer there but half of me didn't want to do that because I'm like well, why would God um, allow me to go through so much, so much pain like why would God allow me to have sleepless nights and and cry and like why <laughs> you know why but then half of me was like maybe that's an answer for me to get out because I won't make it to 18 you know if if I don't and so um, I go to church and I remember sitting down in the um, in the pews whatever you want to call it and I can't tell you the sermon I was that was being spoken I can't tell you the um, the the song that was being sung I can't even tell you what was being said I just remember crying because I think for the first time I was I felt peace um, but also for the first time I felt safe and that was something that I was always searching for ever since you know my mother died and stuff you know feeling secure feeling safe feeling protected I felt protected in a sense of I was away from all of the the chaos in my mind you know in in my life you know with my housing um, with my college work you know I, I felt like all of those things had been shut away and it wasn't the actual experience of church I, I just felt like God was there you know and so I remember, you know, walking out of um, the, the church hall and um, one of the girls I went college with, she introduced me to a lady. And so the lady's like, you know, hi, how are you? And I remember just breaking down and crying and I said, I don't want to live anymore. You know, I just don't. And I remember like, I nearly like fell and she grabbed me and Oh, I don't know, like, I think for the first time, give me a <laughs> my, my eyes. My makeup. Oh. Can I have some tissue or something? <laughs> um, oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, I remember. Um, um, yeah, I felt like um, God was holding me, you know. I think for that moment, I felt like it wasn't the woman per se that was holding me, but I felt like um, I had encountered, you know, something that I was always searching for that went, you know, beyond, um, that went beyond like, you know, peace of mind or anything. I, I was searching for love and, you know, I think right there I felt like God was just like, you know, I've got you, you know, I'm holding you up, I'm, 
I'm, I'm with you, I'm, I'm walking with you, you know. You're not by yourself, you're not alone anymore, you know. For the first time I felt like when I encountered that love, I had encountered um, some type of, of sanity. And I think from that point on, I, I didn't necessarily want to, um, I didn't want to get away from that moment of sanity or that moment of love because I felt like I'd gone through many periods of insanity. So when you, you know, are, you experience something so refreshing like that, I guess it, it, it gives you the option of whether you want to go back to that place or whether you want to continue on the journey of what you're actually encountering knowing that there will be um, turns in the road, there will be pits in the road, but you know, you do whatever you can do um, um, to get that. And I guess, you know, with that one moment, I felt like I had to do whatever it took, you know, to continue with that. And that's what I'm doing I'm, and I'm always doing daily. That encounter is never really, you know, um, changed or anything. So after this encounter that I had um, personally with God and deciding to go after this love and to go after you know this peace that was in God, um, yeah I had moments where I, you know I went back and <laughs> to my ex because you know at points of destruction <laughs> he felt more real to me than God, you know, you can't see God, but I could see him. But the more I was reading the word and the more I started, you know, to um, explore who God was and to know him more and more, is the more I didn't want anything to do with anything that I had previously or anything that I was associated with. Um, and I remember just going through the Bible and I, I saw this woman, you know, at the well, this story about a woman that was at the well when, I don't know, I kind of identified with her. I identified with her shame and her curiosity to why Jesus would want to talk to her or why Jesus would want to know her. You know, she had a past, she had a record. So why does Jesus want to know about her, you know? And so I identified with that. And I think automatically um, God allowed me to explore this character um, and be creative with it and go to her story before her, her before she met Jesus and her life after meeting Jesus and so I identified with the encounter to the point of where I encountered Jesus so I understood how meeting Jesus in that one moment can transform your life forever you know being given purpose and being given love and everything that you've been searching for so this woman you know I wanted to really bring it to life and I felt like it was important for me to place myself in this woman's shoes as I was exploring her character and and you know exploring the actual story and creating um, living waters in creating living waters so I felt as though it was important also for me to put together a devotional so I can share more of my story and make this character real to someone else as she was real to me and make women all over understand that freedom begins in Christ. Freedom and purpose begins in him. It begins in that one encounter and it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, where you're coming, where you, what you're doing, what you're about to do, what you're about to do and what you've just done. You know, that one encounter can change your life forever because it worked for me. This is not just something that has been pimped in the Bible. This is something that is real. Um, and it is just as real as it was 2000 years ago to here in 2014 <laughs> so you know this woman is me I've placed part of me into this woman but also I want to kind of expand and 
and bring to life the power of God's love, the power of this gospel that, you know, that saved me and that I believe in um, day by day. I wanted to show the power of faith because this encounter is all about faith. This journey has been about faith and it's not just one encounter that I had when I was feeling low. This is an encounter that I have every single day of my life in order for me to maintain you know, the freedom that I believe that Jesus has given me, you know? And that is one thing that I wanna give to another woman that may be the woman that I was six, seven years ago. And I feel like that's important. I wanna go beyond inspiring someone. I want to give someone a reason to live. So that's what I want, you know, every woman to experience that love, that peace, that joy and ultimately that freedom, you know, and that's what Living Waters is all about, freedom beginning in Christ. <laughs> <laughs>